Hello girls, guys, or otherwise, this is Rich, and welcome to our Terror Talk Tuesday. Today we are going over the Ace of Wands. I'm going to try to do this pretty much in one take because I've um, already tried to do this like five times now. Um, today we are talking about the Ace of Wands, if I haven't already mentioned that before. Can't really remember because this is the fifth take. Um... Before we go any further, let's get some particulars out of the way. If you're a part of the 20 or 30% uh, of the people who watch these videos and are not yet subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's right down there. Hit the bell notification so you get notified of videos whenever they come out. Uh, maybe that's a possibility if YouTube decides that you are worthy, I guess. Um, and remember to hit that like button, hit that uh, dislike button if you like or dislike respectively uh, these videos. Remember to hit that uh, comment section up and leave me a note whether you agree, disagree, or are indifferent to what I have to say. Um, let's see. If you go into the description, you can always let me know your uh, gripes, bitches, and complaints by sending me an email. Uh, for shorter things... Go ahead and tweet at me, uh, DMs and, uh, you know, amongst the, the crowds of people is fine by me. I don't care. Um, let's see what else, what else, what else? Um, yeah, grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your beverage, whatever it may be. Let's sit on back. Let's, uh, relax and let's get on into it. But first, before I go any further, I do want to let you know that I do have some auctions on eBay that are ending today. Uh, probably within the time of filming. So you might hear some uh, eBay bidding going on uh, of people buying things. So yeah, that's that's probably, hopefully, going to be a thing because um, who knew Pokemon cards sell so well? <laughs> um, but yes, I, I've been listing some Pokemon cards and, you know, some people are willing to buy them for quite a bit of money. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually quite ecstatic. Uh, I will also put a link to my uh, eBay store in the description below if you would like to go and purchase something that helps support this channel. Anyway, as per usual in the grandest of tradition, let's go ahead and uh, read the description given by and the uh, definition given by A.E. Waits in the pictorial key of the tarot. And it reads, uh, he writes, I read, uh, or the book reads, <laughs> a hand issuing from a cloud grasps a stout wand or club. No complaints about that. Here's where we have issues. Divinatory meaning, creation, invention, enterprise, the powers which result in these. Principle, beginning, source, birth, family, origin, and in, the, in a sense, the virility which is behind them. The starting point of enterprises, according to another account, money, fortune, inheritance, reversed, fall, decadence, uh, I think it's decadence, uh, ruin, perdition, to perish, also a certain clouded joy. I do disagree with his divinatory meanings. Most of those I would associate with the uh, pentacles in the... Uh, modern reading of tarot. I do wonder if A.E. Waite were alive and around today, whoops, wrong one, um, if he would, if he were to get a tarot reading from somebody, uh, would he greatly disagree with the definitions that somebody in today's society were to give him? Um, like, would he sit there and take the reading and be like, wow, that was actually pretty accurate and none of it followed my uh, my system, my, my divinatory meanings that I set forth? Um, I do wonder about that. Let me know what you think in the in the comments below. I, I, I think it's fun to think about something like that. If A.E. Waite were around today, do you think he would, if he were to get a reading, how do you think he would react um, how do you think Pixie would react, us still fawning over the imagery that she has put out? I mean, some of this is so impactful and it incorporates so many different, um, uh, walks of life, different cultures, different aspects, different religious outlooks and whatnot. It's amazing. Anyway, getting past that, 
let's go ahead and go into the first thing that I want to discuss. Oddly enough, it is not the wand. I am actually not going to cover the wand because the wand didn't really have anything of note. There isn't anything that I necessarily see in the individual wands, such as, you know, the amounts of leaves or the sprouting of leaves or anything like that. Um... Like with the swords, something that was debunked was the shadowing on the swords and what, where the light side was, where the dark side was. I think maybe I was reading a little too much into it, and that's okay. Sometimes, as long as if it helps us read, we're fine. So getting into the hand, the first thing that I want to look at. Uh, as in every card, or every ace card, we have a right hand. This is often the often seen as the hand of power. This particular hand is coming out of the clouds, denoting that it is part of a divine gift. The wands in tarot denoting uh, fire and passion. Uh, so this is the divine presenting us with, uh, with inspiration and opportunities dealing with our passions. So what I mean by that is this is like the divine... Uh, inspiration, not necessarily an idea uh, like the the swords, but a, a divine inspiration of, oh, this is something that I, I think I have a passion for, um, such as reading or collecting tarot. Uh, as you can see up here, I have quite the collection going. Certainly, some of you probably have way more, and I am so jealous. But, <clears throat> uh, you know, if you're one of those people like me that picks up a tarot deck and you you look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, it has so much imagery. I, I am so into this. Uh, this is the Ace of the Card type feeling. Or a a Ace of Wands card type feeling. Where you see something and you're just inspired to do something. You're in, inspired to follow it as a passion, as a, a venture of sorts. Whether it leads to a career, or maybe it doesn't. Um, maybe this is just something that you do as a great hobby that you absolutely love to do. I am one of those people that I have a passion for reading sacred texts, such as the Bible. Uh, being a Christopagan, that's something that just, you know, fits. But I, I am one that I love reading these stories. I may, during Christopagan Sundays, um, get very irritated and very, um, uh, have some very terse words to say. However, there is a great passion there, a passion for the history, for the words of wisdom that are dripping from some of those pages, some, and the spell work in and of itself by some of the wording that is contained in there. The, uh, the point of Christ coming down and whatnot is a passion of mine. Um, and this is stuff that is given by the divine in, in as depicted in the Ace of Wands here. I keep on going over here, just an FYI. Um, and I clearly have the Ace over here. Um, I've done that a couple times. So, like, yeah, if, if um, you ever thought Vanna White's job was easy, no, no. This, this is not easy. Um, yeah, anyway... <laughs> Uh, I'm no Vanna White. I cannot replace her. She's a gem. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, so that covers the the hand, the divine hand, giving the spark of of passion, the spark of um, inspiration of swords to follow this passion. Again, this I want to uh, have this separate from the Ace of Swords, which is a creative idea, the spark that starts you into thinking about it. But this is really, whenever you get into it, the uh, starting of that passion and whatnot. And this can come at different times. Um, and I want to be clear about that. This can be a note of, hey, this is a seed being planted that will grow. Um, if you are a an entrepreneur of some of some sort, you know, if you get the ace of wands coming up in a reading, you know, especially a finance reading and whatnot, this is your passion that is is peeking its head up and telling you, hey, follow me. 
uh, follow what you enjoy doing, what you have a passion for, because at, in the end, it will get you to better, uh, better ventures. And we're going to talk about one of those right now. Whenever we talk about the landscape, we have a lush green uh, land signifying growth. This is um, a card that's telling you that you are going to grow at what you do, the passions that you seek, whether, you know, like I said, whether it's a financial entrepreneurship or whether this is just a hobby that you enjoy doing. This could be something like, okay, um, I really enjoy drawing. I personally don't. But does that mean I want to quit my job and become an artist full time? No. No, because it's something I enjoy doing on the side. Uh, again, not me, but maybe you. Um, this could be saying that, hey, you know, you're following your passions in drawing. Uh, you're you're going to grow at it. You're going to be better at it. And you're going to have some people saying that, hey, this is pretty cool stuff. Maybe it's a good side job for you. Maybe it's just something that you want to do and like, you know, hand out to people. And that's okay. Um, maybe you want to do some, um, freelance work. Maybe you like to do logos and whatnot. Hey, hit me up if you like to do logos. Um, I have, uh, a, a job for you. <laughs> um, I, I can't pay anything, but I have a job for you if that's something that you love to do for zero monies. Um, but in all seriousness, um, we're gonna next talk about the, uh, castle. But before we go on... Uh, the landscape, keep in mind, it's lush, it's green, it's serene. There's no winds happening here. There's no, uh, harshness in the, uh, in the waters. The water's just trickling around like it, like it should. Um, there's no conflict pictured, nothing like that. So, something to keep in mind. But I want to talk about this castle. Um, it's not something that I think I've ever really paid much attention to because it kind of fades into the background but like with anything in the background the more you venture towards it and the more you venture through this small little tiny sparse forest here uh, along this lush green grass and you cross that little river there and you can make your way up to that castle it will get more magnificent as you venture forth um, this ca castle in the background this is from my notes the castle in the background signifies our potential of growth. This is the end goal. Um, this is what we can get to and what we can have if we continue to grow in our passions, to uh, continue to um, keep those ends in mind and keep our, our eyes on the prize and feeding those passions in our life. Um, so if you keep on with it, uh, you can have this, this castle, uh, again, I'm going over here, but it, because on my screen it's flipped, you know, it's over here on my screen, but over here on for you guys. But if we keep on venturing over this way, then we can get to that castle right over th there. <laughs> okay. Anybody know the way to the gym? Yeah. That, that way to the gym? Yeah, no, I can't do that. Um, okay, let's go ahead and look at it reversed. If you have the Ace of Wands reversed coming up, um, this could be an emerging idea, something that, that hasn't really taken hold in your mind yet. And again, I, wanted, I want to denote an idea of uh, the swords Versus an idea of, you know, passions. An emerging, better way to look at it is an emerging of a passion of yours. An idea of a passion. You know, the very root budding of one. Um, this could be a lack of direction. Uh, this could be distractions. And this could be delays um, in those pursuits. So, something to keep in mind if this is coming up in reverse for you. In the upright, we have inspiration. So maybe you're being inspired for your passions. Maybe you, maybe you are like me. You, you like to knit and you like to crochet. And this guy, little this little guy, isn't done yet. But maybe you like to knit. Maybe you like to crochet. 
um, if this is coming into your life, which I've taken up knitting and crocheting again, or crocheting more than anything, uh, again, um, just add a something to do. But uh, if this is showing up in your reading, you know, it could be an inspiration. Like, hey, maybe I want to make this little doll thing, and I have one that I'm making that should turn out really cool. And I'm kind of hoping to, to share it. Um, maybe maybe I'll put something like that on on uh, the website. Maybe I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna if you want a little devil doll. <laughs> I don't know, even know what I would call them. But uh, uh, this could be new opportunities that are opening for you. These could be uh, opportunities like, hey, you're an artist. Um, you have some really good abilities with commercial artwork, and I have a logo that. I would like you to make maybe these are doors opening up for you that can lead you to that castle hey i gotta read that time um this could be a growth of something that you're already doing that you are already passionate about and this could also denote your potential that you could be just starting out and things are going to get better um if this is an upright this is all aces all day long um so that's what I have for this Terror Talk Tuesday, the Ace of Wands. Ta-da! Uh, I can't believe I got through all that without one bidder coming in on eBay. I am sorely di disappointed in eBayers right now. Hmm. Anyway, um, let's see. What do we have going on this week? Tomorrow, we have the... Uh, Witchy Wednesday, we are discussing the opening and closing of chakras and balancing them. What does that all mean? What can we do? How do we envision this? And um, how can we open and close our chakras and maintain them in a consistent manner? It's a little bit difficult to get into a short episode, so hopefully I can, I can give it justice. Let me put these back over here. Um... So that's what we're talking about tomorrow um, on Table Talk Thursday. We are going through our Table table Topics Cube. So, um, yeah, I don't know what the topic is. I'm kind of anxious to find out. We've had some really good discussions and whatnot going on in the Table Topics dis or table talk, uh, Topics um, the last couple Thursdays. So, yeah, that, that should be I interesting. Yeah, um, and then join me on Saturday for the Outer Temple of Witchcraft, Chapter 4, right? We're on Chapter 4 this time, right? Yes, we're on Chapter 4. So join me for Chapter 4 of the Outer Temple of Witchcraft, and then join me on Sunday for our Crystal Pagan Sunday, where we're discussing uh, witchcraft in the Bible. We are going through our final part of the Witchcraft in the Bible series. So, if you haven't caught up, go ahead and watch the other um, seven episodes. So, go ahead and watch those, if you haven't already. And then join me for the grand finale. Anyway, that's all I have today. I have some auctions to watch. Uh, I, I have to watch them go off. It's, it's a neurotic thing that I do. Um, and, let's see, I have 22 minutes to sit here and, you know go crazy over whether or not somebody's going to bid or not. Anyway, that's all that I have for this this week's Terror Talk Tuesday. A uh, little bit more rambling than I wanted, wanted to do. However, probably not going to edit any of this out. Just going to keep it in there. And until next time, may you have love, hugs, and ladybugs. Bye. <laughs>